Hello. Welcome to Stories in Time. My name is Eloise Schottler. I'm a storyteller. I had thought about a story to tell today, and I was thinking about it as I was driving up here, because, you know, I noticed this morning I really need to go get a haircut. And I was sort of noodling along on where was I going to go and when was I going to get there, and I decided to tell a story I've told before, but add something to it, you know, a little spice, so it's not exactly the same. I love to go to the beauty parlor. First of all, I should say that I love it. I love to sit down in the chair and lean back and feel that water rolling across my head when somebody washes my hair, especially if they'll massage a little bit. Do you like that? It takes all the stress right out. I've loved going to the beauty shop ever since I was young. I used to go with my grandmother, and I'd sit back. I was five, six, seven years old, and watch her. She went every week to a beauty shop in somebody's house, and they would have their perms and their shampoos, and then the woman would put their hair up on curlers, and they'd sit under these big steel helmets that were the dryers. Oh, it was always so wonderful. To get my hair curly, which it was dark and very straight, my mother sometimes used a Tony Home Permanent. Those are terrible. They smell terrible, and if you made one little mistake and left it on half a second too long, you would hair would curl up, frizz up, and you'd look like a chia pet until it was long enough to cut off. My dream, my dream was to have a professional perm. And I dreamed that dream long enough that when I was 13, my mother decided to send me up Central Avenue to Jack Garrison's beauty salon. That's where she went. Jack Garrison's beauty salon. It was on the second floor of an end building in a low-rise strip on Central Avenue. I had a dream then, too, of how I would look when I came out of the Jack Garrison's Beauty Salon. And I had a picture in my pocket to show the lady, because I knew it was going to be a lady, that was going to do my hair. And I got up, I puffed up, and those stairs, I was breathing hard when I came up that tall flight of steps and met her, and yes, you're Louie's daughter, and how would you like to have your hair done? We're going to do a perm. Yes, I knew. And I took out of my pocket a picture from Life magazine, a picture of Sophia Loren, the Italian movie star, wearing her new perky poodle cut. That's what I want. I want to look like that. Well, she took the picture, and she looked at it carefully, and then she said, Eloise, I'll try. I've never done that before, but I'll try to see if I can fix it like you want it. Well, first, she had to put on the perming solution. She rolled it up and put on the perm. You know, that all smells terrible. And then after a time, she rinsed that off and put on the neutralizer to stop the curling. And then she unrolled it and wet it, you know, washed it well. And then she trimmed it, take the frizzy edges off. She trimmed it and then she rolled it back up. And then I was sitting under one of those metal helmets waiting. This was now an hour and a half. I was waiting, waiting, waiting to see my new self. My new self wearing a poodle cut just like Sophia Loren. And when she took me back over to the chair and she started to unroll, unroll those curlers and the, the curls just sprang back and I had these little Tootsie Rolls all over my head and she brushed and she brushed and she brushed. Well, i tell you what it was like as I watched her do that. I felt my heart breaking, and I was fighting back the tears. 
because I could see as she went along that I was not going to look like Sophia Loren, not at all. I was going to look like my grandmother, but my hair was black, not white, and I was going to look exactly like Granny. And I didn't cry in front of her. I didn't want to. I didn't cry in front of her. And I ran home. Eight blocks was nothing. I was running home. I didn't want anybody to see me, and I ran right into the house and upstairs to my bedroom and slammed the door, and I sat down in front of the dressing table. It had one of those three mirrors, one where you look straight in and the two where you can see all sides of yourself. It was awful on all sides. I was granny on all sides of my head. Little curls, not a poodle cut, little curls. I took a brush and I brushed it this way and this way and I brushed it back and I brushed it back. It didn't matter. It sprang right back into the shape she had made when I left the beauty parlor. It was terrible. I was ruined. And then I decided I would take this into my own hands, and I pulled open the drawer and took out a pair of scissors, and I started cutting those curls off my head, one bunch at a time. It can't get any worse, I thought. And as I cut, cut, brushed, cut, cut, I saw I had been wrong. It could get a lot worse. I had just made it a lot worse. I just had these stubby stubs all over my head. Well, that was hard. I had to wear a scarf anywhere I went out of the house for a long time until it came back in straight. It wasn't changed. It just grew back, and it was straight. And I was happy with that for a long time. I would sometimes roll it up on big curlers and try to at least get it to turn under into a page boy. But it wasn't until I was 25 that I really had a major experience with my hair that left a, a lifetime impression on me. Jim and I were living in Chapel Hill, North Carolina. He was just finishing his residency at uh, North Carolina Memorial Hospital. And the doctors had been offered a trip to New York City, a three-night stay for no cost to them at the uh, hotel right on Broadway, and could bring, of course, their wife was included, and there'd be a dinner. And then they would have to go out and look at the place where they made the medicines, and uh, it was a pharmaceutical-sponsored trip. But we'd have three days, and it was the World's Fair in 1964. It was the World's Fair. We were going to go to New York, my first time in New York City. And I would have a chance to visit my cousin. My cousin lived in New York. Now, she and I had different lives. I was married to a penniless doctor in North Carolina, and she was married to a very nice man, and they were living in an apartment on Park Avenue. So I knew that our lives were going to be totally different, and I wanted to look my best, to put on a big, good, sophisticated front for the first time I ever went to New York. You know the country mouse goes to the city to see the city mouse? And I went to a local beauty shop in Chapel Hill, and I don't know why I did this, but I went in and I said I wanted to have a beehive hairdo. Now, do you remember what they were? The beehive hairdo, once it was really done, you walked out of there and you looked like you were walking around wearing one of those steel helmets on your head permanently. And it was sprayed so tight that it wouldn't move. It didn't matter if you slept on it or not because it was sort of cemented together. Permanent hairdo. I thought I looked kind of good. Jim was stunned. He was very surprised when I came in wearing this new outer space look. 
and um, it was comfortable on the bus going up. We went up with a group, and we went into the hotel, and I immediately called my cousin to let her know I was in town. Come over for dinner. We'll have supper here at the apartment tonight. So Jim and I went over to see her. She didn't say anything about my hairdo. I should have known. I should have been warned, but I was just too excited and not very aware, anyway, of what the styles were in New York City. This was New York City. So the first thing she said after we'd visited for a little while was, let's have a great day tomorrow. I've got the best thing. I know I can get an appointment. I'm going to treat you to the most special thing you've ever had, Eloise. You are going to love it. Well, what could that be? Let's go to Elizabeth Arden's. We'll have a morning at Elizabeth Arden's, and it will be my treat. I was curious. I knew the name Elizabeth Arden's. I knew that it spoke of glamour and sophistication. And I said, but I've just had my hair done. She said, oh, no, just don't worry about that. He'll fix it for you. And the next morning, Sandra and I had set up a whole day we would spend together. Elizabeth Arden's, a little museuming, and then we would meet Jim. And her husband would join us, and we would all go out to dinner, and then we would go to the theater to see the original Barefoot in the Park with Robert Redford and Elizabeth Ashley. It was going to be a huge day. Well, it started off at Elizabeth Arden's, and we went up, and everything was pink and beautiful, mirrors all over, glamorous women on all sides, and the... The beauty operator took one look at my hair, and he sort of paled, shaking, and he picked up some scissors, and I said, what are you going to do? I've just had this fixed, and he said, but I'm going to fix it better for you, and he started taking it apart and prying the hairs across and everything, and he cut it. He cut my beehive hairdo right off my head. And he straightened it out, he untangled it, he washed it, he set it, he did a special little cutting, no perms, just cutting. And he set it, and I sat under a small dryer just for a little bit. And do you know what happened? When he combed it out and he brushed it, I looked in the mirror and I couldn't believe my eyes. I was sitting in that chair looking in the mirror and I was looking back at myself wearing a Sophia Loren poodle cut. And it looked wonderful on me. When I met Jim that night for dinner, he liked it. And I loved that he liked it. And from then on, if ever I was in New York City, the first thing I did was to call ahead and make sure I had an appointment at Elizabeth Arden's to have my hair done. And I never told them what to do. I just waited to see what would happen. Thank you very much for coming. Appreciate you being here. Hope you'll come back for another story.